Hello, everybody. This is Vivian Sever. Uh, thank you for joining us again for another edition of uh, GIF Talks uh, 2021. Uh, today, we're joined by Bijon Imtiaz and Arifur uh, Rahman. And uh, Arifur is a producer and uh, Bijon is a writer director, but he jumps on projects as a producer as well. So today, we're going to be talking to them about their relationship, uh, their creative relationship, and uh, about producing and directing and uh, you know what uh, what the future holds for them. So uh, thank you guys for uh, joining us today. I I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk to me and uh, enlightening our viewers about uh, you know filmmaking. So, uh, Arifar, if you can go ahead and start and you know just introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, thank you, Vivian, and uh, and thanks uh, inviting me uh, for and uh, Bijan also. Um, yeah, like we are school friends and uh, we started our journey uh, like um, 10 years back and now uh, we think we are um, on the road of uh, maturity so <laughs> yeah i don't know like our uh, works will talk more like when you people uh, witness our projects that we are doing like uh, from bangladesh and outside of bangladesh like nepal india um, afghanistan um uh, japan so yeah we 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 actually working couple of projects at the same time but uh, all the projects uh, actually started like mostly last 5 years um uh, all the feature films that we developed um like it took al already, already like 3 years uh, some projects like 2 years so yeah it it was a long long time like uh, we dedicated our time, energy, and passion. Yeah, and uh, I'm so happy. Like this is the first uh, festival from my neighborhood country, and I'm talking from Dhaka, Bangladesh, and it's it's really a great honor. Thank you, Vivian, and thank you, Daldara Film Festival. Up to Bijan. I mean, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Vivian, and uh, it's a great festival, and um, we're really lucky that. We have two films in both the years, and hopefully we'll be able to showcase more <laughs> in the coming years. And uh, um, yeah, so yeah, we've been we know each other from very childhood. And one thing I feel like in any relationship uh, is important: what you do after you fight. Because once you have a good time, anybody can have a good time. It's not a big deal, you know, like, uh, but I think a long lasting relationship, we're working together now 10 years. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll work together like, I don't know, 70 more years. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I think most important thing is once you have disagreement, how you resolve it. And that's what I think we have. Um, we fight a lot, but I don't think we bring our ego into the fight whoever's logic is better we go with that at the end so yeah um i think it's true for any relationship including spouses how you resolve the fight is more important than how you have a good time so yeah hmm. perfect wow um so your relationship like what, what was the how do you think it has evolved from when you first media project to now like what, what are the differences and what are the uh the pitfalls that you've sort of identified and sort of uh, you know been able to work around i think um arif can jump in anytime um i think more we're doing it so we have already done two features we have done some short films we have done documentaries together we have gone around the world to different platforms uh showing our films or also pitching um like last five years we've been to um venice can rotterdam um we have been to berlin so uh, i think by now we kind of know what am i doing and what he's doing in a very organic way so we don't usually have problem figuring out oh i'm doing this you're doing that i think in the beginning we might have some issues who is doing what in terms of when we're producing together but now things are falling into places, you know, like um, mm. I think that's what's different now. As Arif said, we're more matured now. Um, without losing passion, being mature is an important thing because I feel like a lot of people, when they become mature, they lose the passion because passion is an immature thing, you know? <laughs> so mm. how do you 
become more calculative without being spontaneous, uh, losing the spontaneity. And I think we are getting into a place where, yeah, we can still do business, but at the same time, not lose the spontaneity and the beauty of why we are doing the thing we do anyway. So, well said. Yeah, so, and I can add. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, 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 please yeah, go ahead. Please. To, I just want to add a little bit, like you know, the personality we have, like uh, Bijan mm. and me, we are totally like um, personality-wise, we totally different. So it's really a uh, you know, a great addition for the for any project like uh, producing together. I play sometimes, you know, like um, um, for the director or writer. Like I'm more, uh, how can I say? Like um, I'm more like uh, soft, <laughs> but Bijan sometimes <laughs> like is like super hard and like to the point. Uh, so it's sometimes for the writer or director, it's it's harsh, but, you know, it's really necessary to open their eyes and say no to them. And uh, my job, like, you know, like to give them more mental support and uh, <laughs> the injury that done by Bijan, I actually, you know, just <laughs> recover the speed and stuff. So it's a great combination, actually. It's It's not mm -hmm. only doing producing mechanically it's mostly also understanding uh the the, the passion and the inner emotion of the writer because most of the time um, they are the most vulnerable not the producer because you know producer has to be more practical but the writer or director they you know they just write wh whatever they they mm. think or imagine so yeah it's a great combination yeah so yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, if if I understood this correct, you have to be. Uh... Can you hear uh, Vivian Bijan? No, I think he got stuck. Stuck. Yeah. Uh, there has to be a right balance between good cop and bad cop. So uh, my next question is going to be, uh, you know, about the the, the actual procedure about. Uh, producing like how do you guys go about what's your process and you know once you get the script and uh you've already decided that this is the person you want to work with so what's your procedure of working as producers or you know um, as a writer director especially keeping in mind that you already have two features um you know so yeah if you could shed some light on that so basically you know for us the person is more important than the story um because once you work with someone, you have to interact with the person next three years every day. So for us, sometimes we have chose the wrong people, but we uh, we stopped the project. It didn't work out for us. It's not that they're good people or bad people. There are certain things uh, matches or doesn't match, right? Uh, and then obviously the story is very important. And the way the person feels about the story is also important. So um, we, our commerce and passion, as I said, is both mixed together. Uh, we don't do like super commercial films. We don't do uh, like all, everything we're doing is kind of crossover. Um, so we don't have any super art house film either. Um, but it's, it's the balance between why you are telling the story is very important. So I play a role in the very beginning where I work with the writer director very closely while developing the project. Um, of course, Arif is part of that, but basically it's my job to uh, take the idea and help the writer director to make it into a script and go through that process. Um, and then, you know, we figure out which platform would be better for it, how, what kind of financing we can get from it, where should we go with it. So basically building up the director. Um, uh, and also, if if they never made any films before, making a short film with them, and then start a festival journey with that short film, so we get the work word out for the feature, basically. So that would happen with uh, Aka, uh, the Indian project, Shuman Shen. He contacted us. We connected in terms of our vision for the world, the way we look at the world. You know, that's very important to us. And and then when he told the story, we already liked the story because we liked the person. Um, and then we developed the script in between. Um, we wrote a short film together, 
which uh, we shot in Nepal. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it, I've seen it. It's it's one of the best that I've uh, I've seen. Yeah, I've hopefully, seen uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully next we'll year. Try, yes, and uh, and in between, while we developing the script, we went to Film Bazaar co-production market. It was in Torino um, Film Lab. Um, it was in uh, La Fabrica at Cannes. So this journey is basically a two and a half year, three year journey. Uh, so all these things. So now we are about to shoot this film next year, um, and 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 we have a French producer on board. We're gonna uh, Anurag Keshav came on board as uh, as a producer as well. So all these things going there from the very beginning, it takes two and a half, three years. So if a person doesn't have that patience, uh, so we are we are kind of like boutique producers, you know. We are we. It's it's not that oh you have a story we bring in money and you shoot it. It's not that. So it's the it's the germination of the idea to developing the story to finding financing to creating a buzz around the director and then hopefully executing the film and then go to the festival or sales whichever is the best. So it's a three year process at least. Uh, before you get to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, Arif, if you would uh, like to add, uh, add No, something. actually, you know, Bijan already like covered everything. Um, yes. So, so basically, um, we found, uh, we find always like that kind of personality who has uh, the vision. Otherwise, uh, most of the time nowadays, sorry, sorry for my assumption. But my practical experience was like every director um, now they want to do something in a very shortcut way. So now actually we, we, we these days we are uh, telling them like directly no. And uh, next two, three years, actually, we, we will not take any projects because already we have three massive projects and we are planning to shoot. Uh, those three projects like next two years and then they will have like long festival journey and other things so yeah basically it's a, it's a collaborative journey it's a kind of uh, lifestyle also like doing something together it's not only you know very uh, specific commercial journey it's mostly talking about stories backflows um, and uh, fixing things together like day and night yeah. so Bijon and Arif are both uh, you guys have s spoken about finding that personality so how do you like I'm sure you know uh, that this must come with experience as well but how do you talk to someone what are the qualities that you're looking in to identify that this is the person I want to work with because it can be a good story but if it's not a good personality then do you think it would be a good fit for you how do you figure out that this is the person I want to go on this journey with for the next two and a half three years four years you know it's a lot of times Vivian it's a gut feeling um, but there is also gut feeling has reasons behind it a passionate person never tries to impress somebody else they talk from a different place that you can feel. Um, and I think that's very important. So, um, I mean, we are very lucky, Arif and I, that now people are pitching it to us, right? Like, uh, so we have pitched to other people for the longest time, but now we get pitches, like people pitch it to us. So when that moment happens, it's what are you trying to get out of it? What is the inner reason behind it is very important. Uh, for us, I'm not saying there is not other way of doing the work, of course, but there are other producers who are suited for you might not be us. So when mm. we are looking at these things, we are not accepting or rejecting. We are being partnered with somebody to go on this journey. Yeah. So if we say no, it doesn't mean we are rejecting. It means that I am not suited for this relationship. It's exactly like dating, right? Like not every person you you date becomes your partner, right? At the end, uh, the opposition person and you decide that, okay, we're going to go on this journey. So it's kind of like that. So um, with all three projects that's happening right now, with Schumann contacted us, we started talking, we gelled. We gelled in terms of the way we see the world, the way we see people, the way we see humanity. 
right? Um, so that kind of is very important. And yeah, it's just it's just you feel their passion in your body as well. And that's the fun part. Um, so if somebody comes and pitches, pitch, pitches that says, I have this idea and it will make this amount of money. And this is the goal. It's not for me. But if somebody's money will have, like films will earn money anyway, right? Uh, so if, if that's your pitch, somebody else will do a better job for you. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to execute that. So, yeah, I'm not saying we don't want to make money. Of course, we want our film to be commercially successful, right? But, um, but willing to go for excellence is more and more important than, um, you know, it's, 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 yeah. So, yeah. And Arif. for me, uh, yeah, and for me, like, it's, it's more easier now because uh, most of the filmmakers now, they're coming with the stories and the next thing they usually tell, like, I believe this film will go to Cannes or Locarno or Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. The conversation <laughs> over. <laughs> it's end. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm the wrong person. <laughs> So you know what, like, yeah, we, we actually need to see, uh, you know, the urge to tell the story first. And then definitely next day that we would love to see the previous works and other informations. And, and most of the time I talked a lot with the filmmaker, like the, the filmmakers, they are coming from Bangladesh. I invited them in our office and like sometimes uh, you know i spend them i spend time with them in the coffee shops and stuff or so like normal you know tong tea shop like roadside tea shops and like mm. talk uh, hours and hours and i would love to know more about their life their parents their personal life and stuff and it slowly slowly you know unfold in front of me like what is his or her intention about telling this particular stories and also how he is as a filmmaker as a human being uh, that's very important for me so that's how it's not like immediately we decide we take times yeah. and mm. slowly slowly at one point we both understood like okay this is the project or like no this is not the project sometimes i push a little bit to be on like okay reconsider <laughs> reconsider and we don't like okay if you think we can uh, listen the pitch but uh at the end it seems like okay Bijan was right dude like this is we we <laughs> had this filmmaker is made really good movies and he wanted to work with us and the first thing he says i think this film will win oscar <laughs> so okay yeah so you are not looking at the story you, you are, are looking not, at you're not yeah. excited about your character so it will never win Oscar anyway, <laughs> because mm. you're looking at an outside variable that is way less important than the film itself. Depends, so, yeah. yeah, agreed, yeah. agreed. Um, you guys spoke about you know the the time frame and you know the, the the that it takes to develop the movie and come to a point where you're confident that you know we can shoot it. But during that time. You know, especially for uh, you know, for you guys as as artists, as filmmakers, uh, but also people who have a you know a production company. Um, how do you sustain yourself? How do you sustain the company uh, during those those long periods? Well, like um, yeah, this is a good question. Um, I <laughs> yeah, I think the more we are going. Uh, more we're doing it, the more precise we're getting. Um, so for me, like teaching has been my savior. Um, and uh, I enjoy teaching a lot. And last five years, six years, teaching kind of sustained. Um, and Arif and I did some documentaries. And ironically, not ironically, surprisingly, documentaries actually pay really well. Um, and okay. so... So Arif and I did some documentaries. We sold to NHK and everything. So these two things helped me sustain. And Arif, you go ahead. Yeah, like uh, recently, uh, you know, after pandemic, I'm working like day and night with my team. I mean, uh, we we have a production company that we found together with Bijan and me and also Shojan Ahmed. Uh, so we three, 
Uh, but mo- mostly me and Shajon, we work here in, in Dhaka and we have a team like uh, 12 to 15 people. And uh, I told them like, you have to separate your brain strategically because you know we are independent filmmakers so we have to sustain ourselves we have to pay our bills so the half of the brain it will you know busy and it will dedicate for the commercial work because otherwise it's not possible to sustain and the half of the brain it will always like stay divine for the project that your heart will be satisfied so we are working like uh, after pandemic we are working day and night to prepare ourselves to pay the bills and stuff and uh, we have a longer goal like next year we have to shoot our feature films so during that time we can't afford we can't afford our time to do any commercial stuff so now you know we are working and we are preparing everything and it's a, it's a kind of like preparing for winter <laughs> so winter is coming mm-hmm. And before yeah. winter, we, we have to save uh, how much we can. Well, okay. Another thing I have to mention, which is, I say that all the time. Um, so we are dependent on our wives a lot. <laughs> yes, right. Um, and uh, So marry wisely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, without them, I don't think we could be, we yeah. could do this. Uh, so they kind of, you know, they fed us. <laughs> during this time so uh, yeah. yeah and uh, yeah well yeah that's that's uh, i i don't think that's uh, said enough you know about the the partners that we eventually have and how mm. they contribute and arif uh, and i arif and i don't have this male ego that oh my wife is working i'm not and i'm not gonna eat it i have to go and show that i'm the man i have no problem with you know like like uh you know eating off of her earnings so yeah well i mean i i know yes, you're making yes, light yes. of the situation but i know that both you and uh, arif are very big uh, supporters of uh, you know female independence and uh, uh, you know uh, of uh, feminism uh, so yeah, but just so that people know, he's not. Yes. He, he's not just making a joke. He, no, it's he, like th- that's what equality to me, right? Like, yeah. um, it's uh, yeah. So, but I mean, their contribution is uh, beyond. Uh, like, we could not do this like without them because we are not from rich families, right? Like, yeah. it's not that our our parents have a lot of money and we are doing art because uh, it's it's cool. You know, like we come from middle class family. So this is the struggle I think we all Desi people feel like face a lot. Like I'm sure other places as well where, okay, I want to do something for passion, but how do I sustain? Mm. And that there is no particular answer. It's different for different people. But yeah, so for us, it's our wives. So that's the answer. <laughs> and uh, so my last question is going to be about the evolution of you and Arifur uh, as a director and producer duo, and you know, uh, for for you, uh, Bijan as as a writer uh, as well, yeah. from Kingdom of Clay subjects to the movie you want paradise. to shoot, which is Paradise. Like yeah. that, that evolution. You know, you guys have gone through so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, on a professional level, on a personal level, how have you guys evolved? from you know what that first feature film was yeah. where people don't know but you know you sold private property to fund that film yeah and to now where people are approaching you and you have the ability to dictate certain terms uh, uh, you know at least so how you know what's that evolution what what's the change you see of yourself from Bijan and Arifur from that day to the ones who are sitting and uh, graciously talking to me today. I think one thing is very important that I don't think we changed. Um, that's the most important thing for us, you know. Um, and um, basically, I was very disappointed after my first film. Um, that's why I'm taking so long to really take my time to uh, make my second. Um, but I don't think we changed, you know, like uh, things we are not going to compromise. We're still that way. Um, 
but throughout this process of like one film to another, um, because we have done a lot more work since that film as producers and uh, uh, people kind of, you know, like uh, we have now admirers that who like our work, you know, who really loves our work and they want to also be part of this journey. Um, and and we want to be part of their journey. So um, one thing I, I feel like um, investors appreciate, a lot of investors who invest in art, it's not that how much money they're going to get in return because they have they are really good businessmen, business women, business people anyway. That's why they have money. But they really value, uh, are you do you compromise your vision or not so this uncompromising thing actually after a certain while which people did not appreciate us before but after doing all this work i think people appreciate that more now um okay. so i think that's the difference where the way people looked at us for an example you talked about paradise right um i gave the paradise script to people who were like ah you know I did not change anything. Uh, and then Roman Paul, who's a very famous German producer, um, he made uh, Waltz with Bashi, Paradise Now, all these films. Uh, he has three Oscar nominations. So once he came on board, same people think it's a better script, right? Yeah. But it's the exactly same script. So I think perception about yourself changes around you when you keep doing the same thing again and again to a level of quality that you can maintain. So it's not that I'm a different person. Obviously, we are more experienced. But at the same time, people's perception changes when somebody who is bigger than us thinks we're good. <laughs> you know, like like now we're working with Anurag, and obviously we are a huge fan. And and because he's in our project now, so people think we are better. We are not better. It's the same script. <laughs> So somebody we talked six months ago before Anura came on board thought the Sikh script was mediocre, but now he's on board. They think now the script is great. Hmm. So <laughs> I think that's what changes people's perception about you. Okay. Um, yeah. R4? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I can talk uh, so many things about uh, about the changes we had, but I can... I, I should not take more time. I can mm, take uh, take only one point. That is like now it's more easier for me um, as a producer to say no. Even even like um, to my writer director. Sometimes if I feel like yes, this is this is actually a kind of suicidal decision. So maybe earlier it was like no my director and producer whatever i mean director and writer whatever he, he decide or she decides that's the thing we we all should do that but now i i, I have that logic logical mind to you know like start the conversation and make things happen um after king of clay subjects vision actually uh, developed another project it it, it it was like money back it the name the title but you know, because it's our second project, so we talked a lot, and at one point we have decided, no, not this is not the project. So then Paradise, uh, you know, came on mind, and we both, from the beginning till now, uh, believe like yes, this is the project. This is the project. Not a single moment was during this journey like a doubtful moment. No. We always like yes, this is the project that that can change everything. So yeah, this is the biggest change in, throughout the yeah. time. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, it's like well, a, uh, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead, please, please. Oh, it's just this last thing. I feel like after 10, 15 years experience, what gives you? Um, before I write something, I wouldn't know it's good or bad. Or read something, I wouldn't know it's good or bad. Now I read something I know it's good or bad. Like that, I think we have developed uh, last 10 years. Even with my own writing, like I take three months gap to read it so I can read it from a neutral perspective. And I can tell like this thing is good, this thing is awful. 
Uh, but before, I'd be confused what is good or what is bad, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bijon and Arifur, for taking the time to talk to us. I know that uh, we're, uh, uh, we don't have that much time. And you know, uh, I know that with you guys, we could have spoken for another <laughs> hour or two and get uh, much, more, uh, you know, much more knowledge. Um, but thank you for taking the time uh for not giving us just uh you know advice on film but uh in some cases marriage advice as well you know <laughs> that's so i do appreciate it uh and uh, i wish uh, you both uh, luck for uh, paradise uh and uh, for uh, gupi paga i mean uh, that that uh, you guys do amazing work and uh, i i just cannot wait for paradise to get done and watch it on the big screen. That's something I'm really excited about, honestly. Uh, but uh, thank you again. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to meet each other in person and uh, have yeah. this sort of conversation, yeah. uh, you know, over uh, over a cup of tea. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. So uh, thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. Bye. Bye.